pleasure and my honor to be here. It is also my pleasure to do this occasion. I am grateful to be here because 50 years ago, had I known that God would smile on me like he's has, I would have probably done a lot of things different. All right. <laughs> but I am grateful to God for the glory that he has shown me and each one of you. All right. Amen. To the Reverend Fred Beasley, who is our master of ceremony, but I would say worship leader. To the president of Cameron High School alumni, the Reverend James Cannon. To the president of the 1966 class, Miss Jackie Gummer, as well, Mr. Roy Gillespie, who is our first vice president. To the faculty, the officers, members, committees, all of you who have made up this great and awesome occasion. Need I say any more? Because simply just us being here gives us to know that God is truly good. Yes. In all things, yes. give thanks. Yes, sir. In all things, give thanks. In the good times, right. in the very, very difficult times, give thanks. This awesome evening has been afforded to us by our Heavenly Father. This occasion is a result of labor and loyalty our children have done in the eyes of our Heavenly Father. Blessing to all of you who have shared on this journey. When Van talks about the 43 years, then I come standing boldly to be grateful that I was dating my husband and we've been married happily most of the time. <laughs> this occasion is to reflect over the beauty of what God can do with his people. All right. Not by what we do, but by what he sees in us. Amen. This occasion is to come back and give in some small way some kind of recognition to the things that God has afforded us. And I'm thankful to say that I'm a Cameronite. I'm thankful to say that 1966 was a great year. I'm thankful to say that each and one of you, I bid you Godspeed. I love each and every one of you and thank you Robert for giving me the very best in your scripture. Thank you for digging deep and coming out with the words that I needed because my mother taught us that scripture as well as she taught us the 23rd Psalm right. and the Psalms. Right. I thank God for all the things. I thank God for having my mother. This occasion gives you many opportunities. I thank God, as Van said, for all of the team efforts that have come through. And I thank God for the communications. And I do type fast. And sometimes I type too fast, Miss uh -huh. Washington. And I get to type and like I talk. And sometimes there's an error or two. But in the same way, this occasion is wonderful. When I look out and reflect over you, thank God for each and every one of you. Thank God for the opportunity of service. Thank God for loyalty. And thank God for love. But above all, like President Obama, thank God for the class of 1966. God bless you and you and you. God bless you. She spoke with great elegance. Is that right? Yes. So we thank God for her. We thank God for all of you who are here. Certainly as we recognize those persons who have come from out of town, I would be remiss if I didn't recognize my friend Travis Langster who is yes. here as well. Yes. All right. And Brother Jesse Tolliver. Where is Brother Jesse Tolliver? All right. Jesse Tolliver. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Jesse Tolliver. The last time I saw you, you had a cherry curl. <laughs> <laughs> that is my friend from way back, Villa Blaze Boys. Amen? Amen. And Brother Cannon. Come on, we're good to see Brother Cannon in the house. Yeah. All right. Amen. Amen. God who has kept us well communicated, Amen. locked up, and kept us informed on what is going on. Yeah. Certainly, before we go into uh, our music selection again, you know, certainly we did want to, at this particular time, recognize again, oftentimes people feel like we have been overlooked, misplaced, and lost in the shuffle, but we haven't forgotten Linda Faith Bentley. So again, we have a token for you, Miss Bentley. Come on, I'll stand and give her a big round of applause. But she has kept us in the little kitchen. She is there right now, all right? We thank God for you, even in spite of, you kept the faith. God bless you. Come on, give us a 
Thank you. One song where it says, I'm glad I don't look like what I've been through. Is that right? <laughs> some of us have been through some things and we don't look like it, but we just thank God we keep on smiling and keep going on anyhow. Amen. Is that all right? Yes. Amen. Okay, at this time, again, we're going to have another selection from this great songstress as she comes back to us one more time. Amen. Amen. <laughs>
What did you say, Billy does? <laughs> I am so overwhelmed. What a beautiful, beautiful voice. Thank you, Patricia. Thank you. Actually, that young lady is one of my former students at Hillsborough High School. Her father is Mickey McCarroll, who also um, attended Cameron High School. I think he's a couple of years younger than we are. And her mother is a, a graduate of Pearl High School and is a biology professor at Fisk. He's an honors English, just fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Panthers. Good evening, Panthers. Good evening, Panthers. I must say that it is indeed an honor and a privilege to recognize our special guest for the evening, the faculty of Cameron High School. During the 60s, we students felt as though you were a part of our families, and you will always be remembered as competent, sincere caretakers of our academic success and of our social awareness. As Cameron faculty, you were dedicated and mission driven <coughs> and loved us South Nashville children. <laughs> Tonight, we have three such esteemed faculty members sharing in our celebration, and we're so glad to have you. Mrs. Florence Taylor. Amen. Amen. Mrs. Billy Washington. Amen. And Ms. Ola Hudson and her sweet, sweet sister. Ladies, on behalf of the Cameron High School class of 1966, Please know that we appreciate all that you have done to motivate us to dream impossible dreams, propelling us into who we are today. Thus, so long as men can breathe and eyes can see, so long lives this, the product of what you have done for us. And this, this, this gives life to this. Let's give them a round of applause. you I still know. <laughs> but some of you I don't know. So if I ask now who is that, just tell me. <laughs> uh, because remember if you was having a 50th anniversary, wow. you can imagine <laughs> what I have. <laughs> the class, this class was special in so many ways. And I like to think about the influence that I might have had on Amen. some of you right. yeah. to continue to move forward. Yeah. Uh, I had some of you in the seventh grade, Amen. some in the ninth grade, Amen. some in the tenth grade, some in the eleventh grade, and some in the twelfth. Right. And some of you I taught twice. <laughs> <laughs> because I had all, all the classes at Cameron School except the 8th grade. I never taught 8th grade. But some of you I had twice in the class. I might have taken you, might have had you in the ninth grade, then again in the 12th grade, or so, so forth and so on. But uh, one thing that I do remember about Cameron 
we were a family. That's right. Amen. Amen. Uh, we were going to uh, work in communities that we knew. And if Miss Hudson called a girl in to give her a tip on hygiene, she was not arrested the next day <laughs> for se sexual battle. <laughs> if Miss Washington called a child in and reprimanded that child, nobody came to school to shoot them. <laughs> we were a family. We went to church with you. We went to the same stores you shopped in. Yes, sir. We yes. had conversations yes. with parents. Yes. And all of that made for better <laughs> students. Yes. Yes. And that's what we don't have now. Amen. And we just pray that Dr. Joseph is going to make a change right. in the public school system because we need the change. I'm just glad to see everybody. Right. I'm just really glad. And I had a hard time getting here. Because, first of all, I thought I was supposed to be here at 3 o'clock. <laughs> and I told Brenda, find Van and tell him that I'm, I'm coming, I'm on my way. And then she said, she called me right back and said, Van said, he's not going till about 5 or 6 o'clock. Well, wait a minute. <laughs> Why am I going at 3? <laughs> okay. I had a ride at 3. Okay. And then I had to make other arrangements. So, the girl who was going to bring me, Brenda's at work, my daughter's at work. That's why she didn't bring me. But the girl who was going to bring me had other things to do. She couldn't wait. We tried Uber. Is that your name? That your name? Yeah. <laughs> we tried Uber. We couldn't get Uber. And then I tried my niece. I couldn't get her. My stepdaughter, she was at work. So I finally said, I'll call Janice. And Janice will bring me. So I called Janice. She was shopping. Okay. But I told her. Then I still thought I had to be at 3 o'clock. But then Jan, uh, Brenda said, uh, Mama, she called me, Mama, Van just texted me. I said, he's not going till about 5 or 6 o'clock. Wait a minute, well, where am I going? <laughs> so anyway, I called Janice and told her, don't rush. You don't have to rush from shopping. Just come and get me. So that's what she did. So I'm here by the grace of God. Amen. 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 And I say to her, who is that? <laughs> but anyway, it's always invite me. Always speak to me when you see me out in public. Don't ever hesitate to tell me who you are. Amen. And even though, as my child used to say, Mama, you don't know who that is. But as long as you went to Cameron School, we're all a member of the same family. I thank you for the invitation. And I don't plan to... Go anywhere, so the next time I have a reunion, invite me. <laughs> Barbara, my twin, 
Right. A few years ago, I went to a brunch on New Year's Day, and as I was going into the building, my one of my former high school teachers said, Ola, I went all the way across the room to speak to you, and I got to the person and realized it was not you. <laughs> when I stopped at the table to register, the person said, there's a lady here that is your twin. <laughs> As I went all around, about 10 people said the same thing. And finally, as I was talking with two of my friends, Barbara appeared, and they said, there she is. Do <laughs> you think she looks just like you? And I said, well, there are three things that people usually look at. We about the same black, ever, head of heavy head. <laughs> and we, at that time, were the same size. Okay. <laughs> I said, I am flattered, but I'm sure Barbara is. <laughs> <laughs> but our nieces and nephews say all the time they don't like to go anywhere with my sister and me because we know everybody in town and everybody knows us. And, uh, every time we stop to have to talk to a former student. But I remember a story that our mother told us about three young mothers who used to get together every week so they could do something beside talk to their children. And every week they'd have a new topic. And this particular week their topic was their most precious jewel. And one lady said that her most precious jewel was her diamond ring, another one her pearl necklace, another one her emerald earrings. And then lastly, this lady fumbled and fumbled in her pocketbook. And finally, she came out with a crumbled picture that evidently she had shown so many times. And she said, these are my jewels. And of course, it was a picture of her children. Uh, all right. Now when Millie and Florence and I started teaching, we didn't make enough money to buy jewels. <laughs> we could hardly even buy the fake jewels <laughs> to say nothing about the real. But as life has progressed, we realize that we have some of the most precious jewels in the world. And you're all over the country, and you're doing such marvelous things, and you've made us so proud. Amen. And I just want to congratulate you and I want to admonish you that what you received at camp, if you think it was good, pass it on. Yes. Because we really, yes. really need it. Yes. And there are children who have no idea about what you experienced. Yes. So pass it on. And on a more som somber note, I received this card today. Some of you were at the luncheon that we have on the second Friday in June every year, and you remember that I asked you to sing the alma mater, and we call our former co-worker, Ms. Florence Cobb, who was gravely ill at that time. And Mrs. Cobb, her daughter said, sang or moved her mouth along with us and that was the first time that she had done anything like that and at 9 30 that night i received the call that she had passed and today i received this card and i made some copies of it. many of you were in this cause dance group every morning and it says remember the space time and energy we shared and there she is with the arms stretched out and then her daughter says, thank you for all your support and the Cameron High School alumni. You remember we sang the alma mater for her nephew. You're wonderful. You are our Thank you. Thank you, class. Let's stand one more time and give our wonderful, wonderful teachers a round of applause.
Okay, let's give our teachers one more big round of applause. All right. To keep our program going very expediently because our kitchen staff has to, they're on hourly time, so they have to do what they have to do. You know, so we will come back to uh, Sister Covington is going to come to us, Hilda is going to come to us after we uh, eat and go on to bless the food. But at this time, I'd like to call on my friend, my brother, my neighbor, a long time ago, Brother Jesse Tolliver, who is going to come and bless the food before we eat it. So come on, let's give Jesse Top a big round of applause. This is another brother that nobody thought was going to be a preacher, all right? <laughs> 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 It is a dangerous thing to tell a preacher to take his time. All right. <laughs> uh, but when asked uh, this evening by Fred to uh, bless uh, the food, um, he said, uh, uh, take time, but the chicken will be getting cold. <laughs> so I'm not going to have you angry at me, but I am going to say this. God is good. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Amen. God is just not good all the time, but he is good every time. As I look around this room, it is a blessing to see friends that I grew up with. Villa and Tremont and Edgehill and South Nashville. And, uh, I could go on and on and on. But uh, it is truly a blessing that God has afforded us this opportunity to be uh, assembled when so many of our friends have gone on to glory. Yes, right. sir. Yes. I think probably later on we're going to remember them, but as long as we remember them in our hearts, they're still alive. Yes. It is good to see those who I, I, I recognize right off the bat, Barbara, good to see them, Tanya. Good to see you. Good to see you. Bill, of course, and others. Just God bless you. And of course, Fred. If we had time. Don't tell it all. No. no, no. Uh, Fred and I were in the drill team together at State. And so. Uh, that's, that's a story in itself. <laughs> but who would have thought that here we are? It, it, you never know what the Lord has in plan. Uh, I think Joshua told me today when we were at breakfast, he said, man, now back then I thought you would have wound up in jail. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. I, I had to leave Nashville, Tennessee, though. <laughs> Yes, I did. Yes, I did. But God has blessed us. We've been, uh, we started out in the medical field, but then wound up, we've been 45 years in the ministry, and God has been good. Amen. Let us pray together. Oh, Lord, our God, we come before your throne of grace tonight. And we're so very thankful for this occasion. For we who have known each other for years, have gathered together to reacquaint ourselves again. But we owe it to you, for our lives have been in the hollow of your hand. And you have seen fit that you have spared our lives to see this moment of time. We thank you, Father, for, for the memories of those who have gone on. Yes. And we pray your blessing hand upon those of us that still continue, that we might go forth in the endeavors in which we have been called. But we make sure that we give you all the glory and the honor. For if it had not been for you, where would we be? All right. Yes. And now, Father, we ask your blessings upon those who have prepared the food for the nourishment of our bodies. And might we use the strength to glorify your name. And we're so thankful to be able to approach your throne and to give you thanks because of the one who died in our behalf. 
and we call his name Jesus. All right. In the name of he who walked the boisterous waters and tread yonder's road to the cross, we ask it in his name. Amen. 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 All right, all right, all right, all right. Get ready to eat. Come on, let the people say amen. Come on, let the people say amen. amen. We're going to eat, drink, and we're going to be married. And then we'll continue with our program later on. So come on, let's have a good time. Music. Come on, music, man. Give us some music. Amen. Walk around. In memory of our classmates, so many things have happened since they were called away. So many things to share with them had they been left here to stay. And now on this reunion day, memories do come our way. Though absent, they are always near, still missed, remembered, and always dear. Dorothea Emma Webb. James R. Jackson. Ida Estella Watson. William Pfeiffer Jr. Wilma Tennant Winstead. Cleveland Moreland Jr. Shirley Samuel. Ernestine Webb, Ethan Crutcher, Charles Wings, Carol Yvonne Donnell. William Kirk Lewis. Arthur Fitzgerald. Arthur Eubanks. William Haley. John Springer. Burton Buquet. Adolphus Jones. Theodore Martin. <clears throat> Herman Robert Pate Jr. <clears throat> Myron Elaine. McKinney. 
Terry Majors. Darwin Gothright. Helen Theresa Lawrence Black. Patricia Ann McFarlane Vaughn. William Pee Wee Vaughn. Belinda Eubanks Stewart, George Gillespie Beasley, Clement Demumbrian Dupree, Dupree. Shake your tail feather later on with the music, amen? amen? But we want you to recognize too that we have a photographer here and we want you to make sure you have pictures taken this night on this very memorable occasion. But this time as we prepare for the speaker, now certainly we have someone who will come and introduce the speaker, none other than my neighbor for a number of years, Jocelyn Senta. So as he comes, come up with my hand, all right? All right. Uh, it's so good to see so many of you uh, who I've never haven't seen uh, uh, in so many years. I was um, quite honored to be asked to introduce the speaker. I've had uh, several biographies of a number of people, and they finally decided to choose on one. So uh, <laughs> at one point, I had all of your biographies. <laughs> And, and to my surprise, at first when I was given this, I didn't know who exactly was Tanya Chavers. I'm thinking, uh, well, <laughs> so many ministers in this room, I won't say that. But, uh, I'm going to read to you just, I'm sure, just a brief portion of her uh, body. Dr. Tanya Chavers Price is a 1966 graduate of Cameron High School and has been a faithful member of the Cameron High School Alumni Association uh, since its inception. She was one of the first corresponding secretaries and later served two terms as president of this fine 
I don't know who wrote in the fine part. But, uh, <laughs> over the years, Anya received several degrees from highly reputable colleges and seminaries. I actually only look to see if they are accredited. <laughs> Most notably, in May 2012, she earned her doctorate in ministry from Emanuel Theological Seminary. With her new calling into ministry, Tanya continued to help others, much like she did for many years as a registered critical care nurse after graduating from Belmont University. That, that is just so impressive. I Really, I didn't know you were critical care, but that's, that's great. Some of her duties in the clergy included the following posts. Spiritual director, scripture therapy pastor, premarital counselor, ordained deacon to the Holy Order of Priesthood, Vicar General of Four Chaplains, Assistant Pastor of St. Francis Free Catholic Church. When time permits, Tanya is active in business and professional outreaches across the, the Nashville community. Concerning what the future holds for her, Tanya shares that God revealed hope ministry to her, where she finds fulfillment both as a grief counselor and as a premarital counselor. Each day she feels blessed to help others. One of Dr. Bryson's favorite scriptures defines her determination. What shall we then say to these things? That God be for us who can be against us. So I, I take great honor in asking Dr. Bryson to come up and to speak to this. This, this body of people who I can't be named. <laughs> so hot, so hot to be a panther. So hot to be a panther. So hot to be a panther. We, we're Cameron Knights too. <laughs> I graduated in 1970, Felicia graduated in 1968, and Karen, my sister, she graduated in 1971. Right. So we all family. We're going to do uh, a, 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 a. It's gone. <laughs> 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 We're just doing one song right now. Can you turn it up some more, please? gospel singers. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Miss Hudson mm. and Miss Washington mm -hmm. and Miss Hudson and Miss <laughs> Taylor and all of them. Uh, we've been singing together for 40, for 40, 40, 42 years. <laughs> we've been singing together 42 years at Spring Spirit and we are our gospel singers. We uh, we have one single that's out right now called He Answers Prayer. Uh, we recently appeared on Dr. Bobby Jones' season finale. And, uh, and we just sung every which way. And God has truly been good to us and has blessed us over the years. 
And then when my cousin asked us to do that, we'd be like, we got our element trying to do something. But, you know, nevertheless, when God asked, uh, when we got the call, we said we would do it. And it's a thing like this. All we're doing is just trying to have fun and make you all think back memories, the ones that you're married to now, the ones that you wish you had married. <laughs> And the one that your kid want to marry, and the one that said, oh no. <laughs> so nevertheless, we just want you all to enjoy. Oh. Amen.
on this awesome occasion. Humbly, I accepted this task knowing that in no way could I stand in the shoes of the lovely lady that we really wanted to be our guest speaker tonight. Miss Ola G. Hudson is a lady and an excellent role model for all the students that walk the halls of Cameron High School. Amen. And we all thank Amen. you, Miss Hudson. Amen. In fact, all of the teachers and principals were excellent role models for the students that attended Cameron High School. And as far as I'm concerned, there will never be another Cameron High School. I want to share with you that the Hudson family has been a part of my life since I attended Napier Elementary School. Miss Ray Hudson was one of my teachers at Napier. Amen. I remember when I joined Spruce Street Baptist Church on a Sunday evening doing BTU, you know, the Baptist Training uh -huh. Union that we had to have every Sunday evening. And I joined church under the leadership of Reverend Woolfolk. Well, Miss Hudson had me to stand up in class the next day and tell everybody what I had done the evening before. <laughs> she knew that I was shy, but she made me stand up anyway. I knew at that time that I was different from most people because I wanted to jump up, scream, holler, and run around the church. But they were so sophisticated over there. <laughs> I was afraid they had locked me away from them. So I held my peace, Miss Hudson, as long as I could. All right. But once I started running and dancing, I hadn't stopped yet. <laughs> and Miss Washington sitting over there, I took typing from her. With long nails, y'all had to cut your nails off, didn't you? Well, I took typing from Miss Washington two years with long fingernails. And so when we were sending out invitations for our faculty, I called Ms. Washington to make Ms. Washington to make sure that I had the correct address so that she could get her invitation. I said, Ms. Washington, we have been out of high school for 50 years. Girl, you old. <laughs> <laughs> she and Miss Hudson, neither one of them confirmed or denied. <laughs> they wouldn't even take the fifth. <laughs> so with this theme that we have tonight, I ask God, what can I say to your people about the theme we finished to begin? We finished to begin. And after thinking about it, it made a lot of sense to me. That's right. That's right. Many of us probably thought when we finished high school that we would go to Tennessee State, a.k.a. a, -A mm -hmm. go to work, or even join the military. This thing <laughs> is powerful. It's a powerful thing. And after graduating, we should have thought about the teachers that we had. Our teachers were our extended family. And we should have learned to adopt the role models that they had been for us. We should have learned to 
treat other people mm -hmm. the way we wanted to be treated. Amen. 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 We had excellent examples to follow. Amen. Amen. Now, it is up to us to teach other children. Your children, grandchildren, great grandchildren, somebody's children, everybody's children. <laughs> Because they don't have what we had in 1966. Right. You know, it's like the golden rule. Treat others the way you want to be treated. For now, more than ever, we need that village that it takes to raise a child. One person can't do it anymore. We will never forget Mr. O.R. Jackson. He only needed to say six words to get our attention. May I have your attention, please? Please. He spoke these words with firmness. He spoke them with seriousness. And his face showed, I don't mean in a minute. <laughs> our teachers were our extended family. They even provided for other students. And we never knew it unless that person told you about it. They were our extended family. You can rest assured that they are not teachers in the school like we had at Cameron High School. That's right. At that time, June 1966, we were the largest class that had graduated from Cameron. Yeah. We were 200 plus. All right. I want to say it was 256, but we were 200 plus when we graduated from Cameron. Remember how Pearl and Cameron would fight after the game? <laughs> Throwing rocks or rocking the club? <laughs> we did not pick up little guns, big guns. We picked up rocks. Right. Yeah. That's right. They threw rocks. Yeah. We threw rocks. <laughs> <laughs> we loved each other, although we didn't show those affections. Some of you even married others from Pat Cameron and Pearl. Right. That's right. That's so there right. was a love there, but it was not shown at that time. <laughs> remember, where is not Diane Horner? Diane, remember in Miss Baines' class when she used to give you, Adolph Jones, and I different exams in civic class? Uh, yeah, we had the heart attack. But you know what? The reward was wonderful because we had homemade banana pudding. Miss <laughs> Baines made it for us and she bought it to us and she did this several times a year. Remember uh, when Cameron beat Pearl? Yes. Yeah. And remember when Patra Haley passed out? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Every time she came up, she said, Cameron, and she went out again. Cameron, we had the school spirit. We loved Cameron. Cameron was a part of us. And you still see that in most of us today. Remember that we had so many math majors that some of us had to take general math. And Mrs. Williams taught us how to write a check. Fill out the checkbook, y'all remember? Mm -hmm. And she even showed us how to register the check the checkbook by using using the check register. They don't get that in school today. My mom. We had some wonderful times at camp. We had some wonderful programs at Deal with Camp. So my challenge to you, class of 1966 is to daydream for just a short time. For just a short time and think about those that influenced you to be who you are today. Think about your teachers, your extended family that helped you along the way. My friends, the churches have failed. Many churches have failed. So it's time for us to pick up Take our children back, pick up, take our children back. Yes. We cannot stand to have another child shot down in the streets. Yes. So what are you going to do? 
What are you going to do? I never had biological children myself. But I have several that call me mama. Mm. I'm just glad I didn't have to give them all lunch money. <laughs> <laughs> but I still buy school supplies. All right. I buy clothes. I take them to school and pick them up. And this, right. they don't have to be family. I even take them to church. Mm. I have taken young single mothers home with me and fed them their children, and let them wash their clothes in my home. All it takes is love. What are you going to do to change class of 66? Cameron High School, class of 66. What are you going to do? It's not too late. Take the challenge. We finish to begin. God bless you. I have one more thing. Miss Hudson used to teach us that young ladies was to always supposed to have a hanky in their purse. <laughs> she also, at one time, I'm gonna tell you this. I'm gonna sit down. I just remember. Uh, she took the she when we had home economics. She closed the door. Pull the curtains down and she told us how to put our bras on the correct way. And we had to get the girls in place and fasten from behind. Well, I had shoulder surgery, something I said to my mother, I said, I can't get this bra on right. I said, I'm trying to do like Miss Huston said. She said, You better get that bra on this way. <laughs> back to us at this time. Let's give them a big round of applause. <laughs> Afterwards, we'll have icebreakers from Ronnie Mitchell and Carolyn Nightingale. 